The year was 1991. It was a quiet night in Lethargy Valley, Arizona, the quietest town in all of Maricopa County. Seriously, despite the hardcore Arizona dry heat, this is one of the most idyllic little towns you could imagine. Everyone who lived there knew each other by name and regularly invited their neighbors to wholesome neighborhood cookouts. The town's historic Main Street had an old-fashioned ice cream parlor, a knitting supply store, and even a Build-A-Bear workshop. And, of course, a few local car dealerships and auto body shops. Lethargy Valley really is just the sweetest, calmest place you could possibly imagine. And tonight, my friends, it's going to rock. While the citizens of Lethargy Valley went about their evening duties, something hardcore was heading their way. Rumbling across the scorching Arizona deserts, burning fuel and belching smog. The hottest hot rods this side of the sun. Wheels so fly they're ready to take off, with riders so badass their own reflections are scared of them. That's right. These are the high-octane, full-throttle adventures of the exploding zombie gearheads, and they're about to give this sleepy Arizona town a four-loco enema. The sun was setting on Lethargy Valley when the lights of distant fire cut through the night. Citizens and shopkeepers enjoying an evening summer breeze halted in town as the redness in the east got closer and brighter. They could feel the rumble of torqued-up subwoofers rattling the ground. The roar of the engines felt more fitting on 747s than road-legal cars, and when the distance was close enough that they could taste the vapors of burning gasoline in the air, they could finally hear the laughter, too. Meet SCP-3885-01, also known as the Exploding Zombie Gearheads, probably the most metal of all anomalies on the SCP Foundation catalog. But let's talk about them before these gas-chugging dust devils were just another number in the man's filing cabinet. Cause these bad boys don't care about filing, they only care about defiling. They rolled into Lethargy Valley like a pack of easy-riding coyotes on gearhead steroids. Their skin is green from rot, and covered in cuts, lesions, and gnarly burn scars. Some have their heads completely cracked open, exposing what little brains they have underneath. Others have fully opened rib cages and disemboweled bellies, but they don't care. These ain't your grandpa's zombies. Forget the walking dead. These dudes are the riding dead. Romero meets Ratfink after ten lines of Colombian Bam Bam and a gallon of monster energy drink decked out in a patchwork of motorhead-style leather and stolen clothes. And you best believe these fun dead freakazoids are here to party hardy. Polly Poundtown rounded the corner of Main Street first on his ride, the Murderlizer. In past life, it had been a coffin, but now with the aid of two monster truck wheels on the back and a pair of circular saw blades on the front, it was a vehicle ready to tear up the streets. Literally. Polly drove down the road at a breakneck pace, leaving a trail of sparks and black smog behind him. He was screaming something about being king of the world when the vehicle exploded underneath him. The force of the boom flung Polly down the length of the street. He hit the window of a local barbershop and shattered through like a fleshy missile. For a moment, he lay on the tiles, a leather pincushion of broken glass and wooden shrapnel from the recently detonated Myrtleizer. But at no moment in this whole insane ordeal did Polly stop laughing. He got up, noticed his neck was twisted backward at an odd angle. We told you it was a breakneck pace. But Polly just grabbed that sucker and crunched it back into place. It'd take a little more than a totaled spine to stop Polly Pound Town. After all, the night's fun was only just starting. More tricked out zombie roadsters were pouring into the town from every angle. Hopped up on a combination of tequila, lighter fluid, and some stuff we can't even mention if we want to keep monetization on this video. Steely Dan was roaring into the Build-A-Bear workshop on a modified toilet with all crushing caterpillar tracks. Once he'd busted through the facade, he dismounted his porcelain throne and began incinerating walls of teddy bears with a custom flamethrower, powered by a tube going into his stomach cavity. Once he was done burning 90% of the bears in the store, he used the remaining unsullied parts to make a grungy-looking bear in his own likeness. He strapped it to the front of his terrifying mobile toilet and then burnt that, too, just for the fun of it. 
Bareback Boris was making a beeline for the ice cream parlor, riding what would look like a bowl to the untrained eye. It was actually a taxidermied bowl, gutted and fitted with a nightmarish configuration of motorcycle parts that would function better together as a method of execution than a workable vehicle. But that's just how the exploding zombie gearheads like it. Boris pulled the handbrake, which was made out of some old bones he dug up once, and ground the bull cycle to a screeching halt in front of the parlor. He climbed off and kicked in the door, before running in to cause some chaos. Boris, the animal that he was, grabbed handfuls of gelato and shoved them into his mouth, before turning and spitting them at the wall. He pulled out a bottle of 90% vodka and took a long swig, before taking a court summons out of his jacket and shoving it into the bottle. He lit the top of the litigious fuse with his lighter, which was shaped like a knife, and made a Molotov cocktail. Moments later, the whole store was in flames. Boris stepped out of the burning ice cream parlor, on fire but utterly unfazed. He pulled out no less than four cigars and lit them on his own burning skin, before smoking each one in a single pull. If his lungs didn't already look like blackened lumps of decaying coal, they would have been screaming at him. But right now, the only person screaming was Gene Simmons of the band Kiss, as some of Boris's fellow riders rampaged through the streets past him, unholy blaring from their radios at ear-exploding volumes. The exploding zombie gearheads didn't throw out-of-town ragers like this often, but when they did, they always tried to make it one for the history books. And before you start worrying about the safety of the citizens of Lethargy Valley, Arizona, you should know that the zombie gearheads never hurt anybody. Well, never hurt anybody on purpose, that is. If a piece of stray shrapnel from an exploding Camaro reshaped with scrap metal to look like a giant fist spraying fire from its knuckles happens to take out somebody's eye, well, that can't really be seen as anybody's fault, can it? Especially when you don't have eyes anymore. The closest thing to the brains of this operation, which for these guys really isn't saying much, was a free-thinking, free-spirited, free-liquored individual known as Joey... <clears throat> nuts. The whole gang had probably about 40 brain cells between them, but at least five of those cells belonged to Joey. While many of his rotting buddies were goofing off and causing mayhem across town, Joey was already acting on the real reason everybody was here, getting new parts for their sick-as-all-hell car mods. Sure, as mechanics, they couldn't produce actually workable vehicles worth a damn, but at the end of the day, isn't a vehicle looking awesome much more important than boring old functionality? If you think otherwise, you're probably just a square. But we digress. Back to Joey... <coughs> nuts. Joey and a crew of his boys, including Dirty Mike, Scuzzy Steve, and generally unclean Gary rolled up to one of the local auto body shops and bashed the door down with their vehicle. Which, by the way, was a modified SUV modified with bulldozer parts and a makeshift cannon. It was a powerful, if structurally unsound, motorized siege weapon. Joey and the boys jumped off the vehicle and stormed into the building, wielding pipe wrenches with nails and fishing hooks welded onto them. A confused mechanic was quaking in his boots as the gaggle of zombie gearheads approached him. Joey stood at the front, swinging his pipe wrench around with menacing randomness. He was chewing 12 toothpicks, making him look extra tough. The mechanic, with a quiet trembling voice, told Joey and the boys that they needed to leave. They weren't supposed to be back here. They needed to leave and come back during opening hours. It was the most polite telling off he could possibly muster. The exploding zombie gearheads just laughed. Once they were done cackling, Joey lifted up his pipe wrench and pointed it at the terrified mechanic's face. Joey cleared his tobacco and gasoline burn throat and said, Listen, you stupid grease monkey. I'm only gonna say this once, so open your ear holes real wide and listen up, okay? You're gonna pack up your crap and leave, so me and my boys can loot this place to our heart's content and beef up our sick-ass rides. And if you don't leave, <laughs> you're gonna be holding this here pipe wrench for me in your prison pocket. You get me? The mechanic definitely got him. He didn't waste a moment in hightailing it out of the store while Joey and the boys pulled a classic smash and grab on his wares. They stole everything from whole cars to wrenches and lug nuts. Across town, the exploding zombie gearheads were doing the exact same thing stealing or stripping every vehicle in sight, and cannibalizing the parts for their own righteous whips. Town by town, vehicle by vehicle, explosion by explosion, they'd one day figure this whole mechanic deal out. 
With the night's revelry finally concluded, it was time to return home and get to work on the next set of rides. This legion of awesome, unkillable morons piled back into their stylish death traps and rode off into the misty dawn, leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars in property damage behind them, but not a single death. As hyper-destructive anomalies go, they're honestly pretty benevolent, or at least too self-centered to be truly malevolent. They tore up the desert on their way back to the real SCP-3885, Vulture Gulch, the home of the exploding zombie gearheads. It's a desert shantytown that's officially been abandoned since July 9, 1973 due to high volumes of dangerous radion gas being emitted from the uranium deposits in a nearby mine. But these intense joyriding mutants hardly mind a little bit of radiation in their sweet pad. Be it ever so radioactive, there's no place like home, right? Some of the vehicles even exploded on the way back to the place, but the boys didn't mind. The flaming explosion survivors just crawled out of the fire and hopped onto the rides of their closest buddies. All in all, everyone in attendance had a damn good time that night. They'd spend the rest of the early morning setting rocks on fire for fun and chewing on ignited fireworks. That's the kind of brain trust we're dealing with here. When the Foundation eventually contained them in Vulture Gulch, the gearheads didn't even put up a fuss, as long as the Foundation kept supplying them with three decommissioned vehicles every month. It's a pretty sweet deal. A crazed car lover's paradise, where as long as you keep it within the walls, anything goes, baby. But there is one strange little detail. A question that remains unanswered. Drones sent in by the Foundation to spy on the residents of Vulture Gulch have picked up one strange recurring theme in their chatter. Mentions of an individual known only as The Boss paying them a visit. And we can only assume they don't mean Bruce Springsteen. The only clues we have are that the gearheads believe this boss created them and put them here on this earth to be totally rad. The other clue is a seemingly pervasive belief that, someday soon, the boss will return. Who do you think the boss of the exploding zombie gearheads truly is? Let us know down in the comments. Now go check out Top 15 Most Dangerous SCP Monsters in Containment, an evil monster created by the SCP Foundation SCP-2419 The Laughing Men for more of the biggest bad boys in Foundation history.